UPNG students severely injured following clashes with police. Uproar in Parliament between opposition and government MPs. And police to investigate today's incident. This is National MTV News with Hope Imaka. Good evening and thank you for joining us for Wednesday's news. Four UPNG students were rushed to Port Moresby General Hospital in critical condition just after lunch today, along with four others with minor injuries. All four students in critical condition were stabilized and two were reportedly discharged. Students at the UPNG campus had planned a protest march to Parliament this morning, but were stopped by police. It's currently a shootout happening at the UPNG. As you can see, students have attacked police. The police are now retaliating by entering the boys' dormitory and shooting out into the dormitory. The situation at UPNG this morning was chaotic after police retaliated against students. It is understood that students were injured with gunshot wounds. Police were inside the campus shooting out at the boys' dormitory. A situation started escalating outside the campus as members of the public started rioting against the police after they heard students had been injured. Students and police met here and then students attacked police, leading into the retaliation into the campus. As you can see here, the thongs and clothing of the students that were attacked. Currently on the other side we have a roadblock going on from the public. We're currently um, holding a roadblock, sending cars back down to Garohun. Governor Jufa was at the scene trying to understand the situation, but was disappointed at how the police opened fire at students. Quietly, to defuse the situation. This might be the other option. The other option is that if you defuse the situation, there will be peace. Right now, there's populations gathering about this, and we have to, we have to be concerned about what, what can happen. Yeah, it can get out of hand. We then rushed off to Geruhu St. John's Hospital, where students with serious injuries were taken. As we arrived, an ambulance carrying a student with a serious injury was leaving for Port Moresby General Hospital. We followed the ambulance to Pomjen, where the situation was tense and emotional with people screaming and crying as the injured students arrived. They have currently brought the student here to Jopom General Hospital from Garahu St. John. Currently he's being in the hospital treated. The crowd has gathered around the hospital crying. The situation then escalated as police drove into the hospital. The crowd then got rowdy and started screaming why the police had attacked the students. But the situation wasn't about to get any better as an army police vehicle approached police and then left, while another UPNG security car brought in another student with minor injuries. Tear gas was dispersed. <laughs> Authorities have confirmed that there are no deaths. Adelaide Sirox Kari National, MTV News. Port Moresby City is on high alert following the confrontation between students and police. The emergency section of Port Moresby General Hospital was packed to capacity with students and the public as they watched ambulances bring in the injured. Port Moresby is in shutdown. PMV buses and taxis have stopped operating and schools and business houses closed soon after shots were fired by police to disperse UPNG students. It was an uneasy sight at the ANU unit that was filled with crowds as they watched ambulances drive in with injured students. When MTV arrived at the scene, the third ambulance arrived, which got the crowd anxious. Those who were at the hospital were the university students, concerned parents and PMV bus drivers and crew, taxi drivers and members of the public. <laughs> Meanwhile, at the Garahu General Hospital, the main gate was locked to stabilize the injured students to move them to the Port Mosby General Hospital. While MTV crew was on the scene, another ambulance was also seen leaving the hospital to Pomjen. 
Meanwhile, in other parts of Port Mosby, the streets of Moratatu was on lockdown as crowds gathered around the bus stop. According to eyewitnesses, there was a shootout by the police. The Marilyn Diaukatam, National, MTV News. The shooting at UPNG this morning was raised in Parliament today by Dr. Alan Marat. He asked the Prime Minister as to who authorised the shooting. This question was raised soon after Parliament opened this morning. Dr. Marat also asked why the Prime Minister is not stepping aside to allow investigations into allegations against him. Dr. Marat's series of questions without notice was the second question of the day as Parliament resumed today. Who authorized armed policemen to shoot at unarmed students at Fort Benner University of Papua New Guinea this morning and why? Secondly, Mr. Deputy Speaker, why can't the Prime Minister step down to allow due process, allow himself to be interviewed by the police, because that is what the students want. That's what the students are asking for. The second part of that question, asking the Prime Minister to step aside, prompted a confrontation between Patrick Proich and Dr. Marat. Proich can be heard asking, who are they? Referring to the students. They are students. They are future national leaders. You shut them out. They start a reputation of questions. You shut up. You shut them out. They start a reputation of questions. Shut up. I'm asking the question. It's a question for the students. It's not for you to answer. Governor for Southern Highlands William Powey also felt that the question was out of line and asked for a point of order to not allow this question. Issue right now. This is Parliament. We talk here. You know the law, Mr. Speaker. You should not allow this question in this floor. It's propagating civil unrest and public disorder. He knows very well. Prime ministers are elected by parliament. You know the law. You should not circumvent to anybody. In answer, the prime minister said he has heard that shots have been fired, but unconfirmed reports as to how many students have been injured or killed. I am not aware. I've just had reports of the incident at the university. I am told uh, that uh, there has been some shots fired, but also some tear gets unconfirmed reports coming through. Mr. Speaker, I will make sure that the uh, Minister for Police and his team give a detailed report uh, in due course. But uh, Mr. Speaker, this is not something that we want. It is not something that we want. The Prime Minister then accused opposition members of engaging with students, which prompted this reaction from Gary Jufa. Can the Prime Minister stop making those ambiguous, vague statements that, that leaders are involved. If you know the name the leaders, please, yes. you know. This is unfair to all of us that are sitting here. We all have children at university. Yeah. Come on. What is wrong with engaging with students? There's yeah, nothing wrong with that. That's nothing wrong, exactly. So I was there because I was concerned for my students. And I was in plain sight. I did not go at dark or hide or bring them anywhere. But so, you know, stop misleading us. The Prime Minister said this shooting is now a police matter and a commission of inquiry will be set up to find out what is happening at the university. Mr. Speaker, points have been made in a very democratic way, points have been answered. But yet, some people continue not to accept that. Mr. Speaker, the matter has now become a police matter and we will leave it to them. They will carry out the investigations. Uh, in fact, in future, in, in, in the coming weeks, we will set up a commission of inquiry to establish what is going on there at that university. Mr. Speaker. In response to questions about him stepping aside, this is what the Prime Minister had to say. In, in the mindset of uh, the member for Rabaul and many of his colleagues, uh, Mr. Speaker, stepping down for what? For what? He knows, uh, he knows very well, Mr. Speaker, he knows very well, he knows very well as a lawyer. Allegations have been made of serious crimes being committed. Let's just see allegation. Can you allow the police to move in to interview, to interview? That's not...
convicting somebody. Oh, no. Oh. Okay, you are getting your debate. You have made your point. Prime Minister, continue. Mr. Speaker, I have said all along that I will make myself available for any interview, any statement from my staff or myself on the conduct of our office in regards to the allegations that are before us. There has never been a question about that. The question is about the warrant. Why we have to run to go and get a warrant without even conducting an interview in the first place. Sarah Aupong, National MTV News. Opposition member Karen Gakua has questioned the integrity of the national government, saying what importance is political power to the lives of the students who were injured this morning. In a news conference after Parliament today, the opposition condemned the shootings, saying it is unconstitutional. The opposition came out of Parliament and went straight into a media conference to address the shootings at UPNG this morning. Opposition leader Don Polia was quick in his opening statements condemning the shootings. The opposition views that as wrong act by the police, as not constitutional, as breaching human rights. Opposition member Karen Gakua says the shootings now questions every member of parliament and what importance is political power over the lives of all the university students that were and are now affected by the boycott of classes. If some students have been shot, they are injured, what more price will this nation be asked to pay before somebody surrender their political power? Of what importance is political power compared to uh, the life of young people, and especially when we have 10,000 students' uh, future at stake right now. Dr. Marat came down hard on the Prime Minister, saying the Prime Minister must immediately step down from office after this morning's events. Stepping down does not mean that he is already charged. The stepping down is to allow the normal conventional processes to begin. For him to be interviewed by the police. If that's what it's going to take to cool the temperature down in this growing tension, why doesn't he do that? That's the right thing for him to do. Furthermore, the opposition questioned why parliament was adjourned to the 2nd of August, which they said the government is avoiding the vote of no confidence by doing so. They are running away from the vote of no confidence. And Papua New Guinea should know two very important issues today, vote of no confidence, this week, vote no confidence and the students' unrest. They purposely chose to run away from the problems. Yeah, yeah. Stanley Over Jr., National MTV News. Meanwhile, Port Moresby General Hospital has confirmed that there have been no deaths from the injured brought in from the University of Papua New Guinea today. Pom Jen Chief Executive Officer Grant Muddle told MTV late this afternoon that there had been zero deaths at the hospital and zero deaths on arrival at its accident and emergency ward. Of the eight, two had been treated for gunshot wounds and discharged, two had required surgery and were stabilized, and four had received general treatment. Mr. Muddle confirmed that a dozen or more others had received treatment for cuts and bruises. A very strong statement was issued this afternoon by the Prime Minister on the shooting of the university students. While calling on parents to remain calm, Prime Minister O'Neill said criminal elements are behind the protests and factors leading up to the shooting incident this morning. The Prime Minister Peter O'Neill is adamant that there are criminal elements behind the confrontation between the students and police this morning at the University of Papua New Guinea. In an official statement released this afternoon, O'Neill condemns agitators responsible for instigating this violent confrontation. He said the students' protests and factors leading to the shooting incident are driven by people who are not students. The Prime Minister called for parents to remain calm and he said students must now go to class and complete their studies, reminding them of a privilege of an education. While the Prime Minister said the facts relayed to him is that a small group of students were violent, 
threw rocks at police and provoked a response that came in the form of tear gas and warning shots. The statement said there are no confirmed deaths as reported by other media outlets, but five students have been injured and are in stable condition at Port Mosby General Hospital. The Prime Minister reiterated his call in Parliament that members of the opposition have been engaging with students and have politicized this matter. He even went as far as to say that the blood of the injured students is on the hands of those members and their supporters. Sarah Aupong, National MTV News. Police Minister Robert Atiafa has warned that opportunists damaging property and assaulting students will be arrested and charged. He said there have been reports of university buildings and some houses being set on fire and a number of police and private vehicles being damaged. Minister Atiafa said a number of students were also being intimidated for refusing to take part in protest action because they want to return to classes. He said the ringleaders of the violence are not students and police are now investigating the string of offences that have been committed and arrests will be made. The police minister also condemned Australian news agency ABC for their coverage of the situation in Port Moresby and telling the world that students have been killed. Minister Atiafa said the headline that claimed four students had been killed and seven injured is total nonsense. Unfortunately, this false information was reported on global news agencies. He urged the ABC to get out and report the facts and not just repeat what is on social media. Minister Atiafa said there are even reports that an international airline cancelled its flight to PNG as a consequence of ABC's reporting. Police Commissioner Gary Baki confirmed the incident that happened today, resulting in police discharging tear gas and opened fire at UPNG students. He confirmed that about 23 students were injured during the incident, of which four were severely injured and are hospitalized. Baki has tasked Commissioner of Crimes Victor Isovbe to investigate the incident. Commissioner Baki confirmed that there were no reported deaths. However, he said police will investigate the outcome of those injured and give a confirmed report later on whether the injuries were from a firearm or tear gas. Baki said he is awaiting medical reports to confirm the details of the injuries sustained. What we, uh, uh, the reports that have uh, reached police, four of those uh, students have uh, some serious injuries that are currently now at the hospital um, that they have been attended to. Some others have been treated and released, and there are a couple that has been held down at Gerego uh, Hospital that are also being treated as a result of uh, inhaling uh, the effect of tear gas. Uh, uh, as to the death, there, is no, there are no students being killed. Bucky blamed the students for leaving the university campus, saying that if they remain, nothing would have happened. However, he said he is not protecting the police in that matter, saying that investigations will commence. Meanwhile, several police officers have been injured and police vehicles stoned by students. I am not protecting, all right, for one minute protecting the actions of my men. All right, what I'm saying uh, here is this. If there are students injured and there is a requirement, the police has, has a process that is involved in any incident that, revolves, uh, sorry, that results injuries that may be sustained, which is we conduct our own investigations. All right, people are always being very critical about police investigations, but it's a process that we have to go through. The commissioner has cautioned political leaders to be honest and stop stressing ordinary citizens of their political motives. He also assured the public that police will beefed up operations around the city to bring back normalcy. The police, are, we will, after this briefing, we were, sorry, after the briefing this afternoon, police will be conducting our own investigations. And I will come back to the media later on to inform the media as to what has happened. Pasanata Yama, National MTV News. Police Commissioner Gary Baki has brushed aside comments about students being killed circulated on social media, saying it is totally false. He said it is important that the country is informed that there is no such thing. Baki called on anyone that is promoting social media to be very careful on what they say because that can result in un inciting unrest. 
what has been circulated in the social media about uh, students being killed uh, is, is, is totally false. All right, it's important that the country is informed that there is no such a thing. And I also call on the, you know, anyone that is uh, promoting the idea on social media to be quite, uh, you know, they have to be very careful on what they say on social media that influence the major public because that can result in inciting, you know, insecurity and uh, situations to occur in the city. And what, that's what has, has happened. The University of Papua New Guinea has obtained a restraining order today to stop the UPNG SRC from boycotting classes. The six-part order outlines that part, apart from no boycott of classes, the UPNG SRC is also restrained from conducting activities that is contrary to their enrollment as students of UPNG. They are further banned from barricading lecture rooms and threatening and assaulting staff of the university. This national court order comes immediately after students were critically injured from gunshots fired at them by members of the police force this morning. Tensions high in Leh and clashes in Mount Hagen in relation to the shooting in Port Mosby. Details when we come back. Welcome back. Tensions remain high in Leh City as students from the University of Technology reacted to the shooting of UPNG students in Port Moresby. Earlier, the road near the university was barricaded but was later removed by police. Over 50 armed police personnel were deployed to Unitech to contain the situation. Along the road that runs past the Unitech campus, nearly all the police vehicles in Leh were deployed Armed police blocked off access into the campus and worked to contain the students. The frustration today was evident. Stones kept being thrown at police vehicles and members of the media. Unitech was reacting to news of students who had been shot in Port Moresby. Students are maintaining a call for the Prime Minister to step down. Unitech has remained orderly and calm even with the boycott until tensions erupted this morning. Also present at the campus today were senior police commanders, the Lay Metropolitan Commander Anthony Wagambi, the Rural Commander David Warup and the Provincial Police Commander Augustin Wampe. About an hour later, the Vice-Chancellor Dr. Albert Schramm and student leaders came out of the gate and invited the commanders into the campus for a meeting. As the meeting progressed, a vehicle belonging to Water PNG, the government-owned water company, was set on fire. What was discussed wasn't disclosed when the meeting ended. Police were ordered to withdraw immediately, but they will maintain a close watch for any developments. Scott Whitey, National MTV News, Leigh. After meeting with students, Leigh Metsup Anthony Wagambi called for understanding and cooperation between the student body and lay police. He has advised that the situation is tense in the campus and that a forum has been called off. You know, by dialogue. Uh, unfortunately, when the police unit arrived there, they were stoned. So the police, uh, in order to defend themselves, had to fire a couple of warning shots. And then it turned into a stone throwing incident where police were uh, stoned. So reinforcement, reinforcements were called in and uh, local campus. Uh, the students were inside the gate fence of the area and uh, police were outside. So we maintained presence there until we were able to uh, arrange with the SRC and the administration. So myself along with our Chief Inspector. Meanwhile, Mount Hagen Park students marched to the Hagen Police Station at around 2.30 this afternoon after they heard through social media that UPNG students had been shot by police. The public then got involved, making the situation out of control MTV Hagen correspondent reported that stores and offices had closed after the public started throwing stones. Pictures sent in show students ripping off a billboard featuring a picture of Prime Minister Peter O'Neill. Late this afternoon, there was reports of more looting and rampage. 
Acting Education Secretary Dr. Uka Kombra says that the Grade 10 Written Expression National Examination will proceed tomorrow. Dr. Kombra says that the, under the standings policy on examinations, schools will proceed with this important assessment, which contributes to 30% of students' academic results. The written expression exams uh, that are uh, conducted uh, will make up 30% of the total exam results at the end of the year for grade 10s. So it's very important that every student uh, should attend, and especially in NCD, I heard and ask uh, that parents, where possible, you take your children to school so that they sit for the exams, because if they miss that exam, uh, we are not going to repeat the same exam. Uh, however, there is uh, a possibility or there is always a case like this when we do allow for the system to give an average result at the end of the year, uh, which, which may go in the favor of the student or otherwise. So uh, I would urge every parent that the all schools in NCD are officially open and we ask all the teachers to be there at the school to administer the exams. And now looking at our finance news. The Kina opened unchanged at 0.3160 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, your Kina was buying 0.3085 US dollars, 0.4110 Australian dollars, 0.2687 Euro and 32.86 Japanese Yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York close, copper closed lower. Gold, coffee and cocoa closed the day higher. Crude oil closed higher. Palm oil and copper closed the day lower. And on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed at 17.95 points higher. The ASX closed at 1.03 points lower. And the All Ordinaries closed at 0 0.08 points higher. The day's other stories when we come back, including Hillary Clinton's nomination as the Democrats' candidate for the presidential race. Stay with us. Welcome back. Dr. Martin Goldman, the acting director of the Forest Research Institute, said research carried out in the, at the Institute can now redirect focus to inventing new finished products. This follows the new downstream processing policy that can also involve production of other timber products apart from wood or log. FRI has since been working alongside the Australian Centre for International Agriculture Research to enhance their work. Studies to identify tree species for preservation and for harvesting have become one of the core functions of the Forest Research Institute. FRI's acting director, Dr. Martin Goldman, says the amount of research has greatly helped in other joint projects with stakeholders in downstream processing. He says one of its many seedling regeneration researches has proven to be used in a biomass electricity project, which will come into operation soon. Uh, we've been practicing uh, uh, on uh, the uh, improvement of the different seeds and different species, especially with the eucalyptus diglata, the, now that the eucalyptus pellita has been uh, uh, improved and it's been now taken over by PNG Biomass Project. Currently, there are up to 200 plant species that's being studied that can be utilized for use in various forest products, while wood and log have been by far the two common end products extracted from trees, Dr. Goldman says more research will now be carried out to identify other products that can be made from timber. With forest products, the policy now is to go in downstream, downstream processing. And we have uh, been working uh, very hard lately with the uh, Australian Centre for International Agricultural Research, uh, who have assisted us in terms of uh, uh, developing this research in uh, understanding how we can add value to the timber that we have. The Forest Research Institute also has limited funding challenges in carrying out its researches. All researchers have remained paused as a result of this. Colin Barilai, National MTV News, Lay. 
A New Guinea Limited has congratulated Hane Garo for setting the benchmark as Booker Port Manager in facilitating the relocation of the Booker Sales Office. General Manager of Customers and Markets Dominic Kamu was pleased with the commitment shown by Mrs. Garo not only as a manager but a woman, improving Air New Guinea's image in the autonomous region. Air New Guinea Boca on Monday this week opened its new office building. Mr. Kamu says focus on customer service that is vital in its business. Now we have no plan time, but Sunday's mindset blew me. Sunday is the way we do business and deliver our business to our people. Our commitment to the people of Bougainville, our commitment to support the people of Bougainville in the restoration process. Landlords Mr. and Mrs. Habitan of Janik Investments were thanked for giving Air New Guinea the opportunity to do business. Private-public partnership has to be the way forward to be a better developed town in Buka. If we can only try our best to have the mindset and to have the quality and plan buildings in this town. Autonomous Bougainville government's Deputy Speaker Francisca Samoso thanked Mrs. Caro for her work in Bougainville. She challenged the people to respect facilities as part of new developments in Bougainville. I mean, no easy plus something as a woman to actually say, hey, Air New Guinea, long head office, are we able to make a difference? Can we move Air New Guinea from where it is now to something where it's supposed to be? The new modern building's location is now convenient for customers. It has a larger office space, which makes it more conducive for staff and customers. <laughs> Fabian Hakelitz, National MTV News. And now heading overseas, Hillary Clinton declared herself the Democratic Party nominee for U.S. President, making history as the first woman to lead a major party in a race for the White House. The former First Lady Senator and U.S. Secretary of State beat rival Bernie Sanders in New Jersey's nominating contest, expanding her lead a day after she captured the number of delegates needed to clinch the nomination. Clinton's race against Trump, 69, who became his party's presumptive nominee last month, will unfold as she faces an ongoing investigation of her use of a personal email server while Secretary of State. Opinion polls show the controversy has hurt Clinton's ratings on honesty and trustworthiness. Clinton, who now must try to unify the party and win over Sanders supporters, has based a large portion of her campaign on women's rights movement in American history. True Kai Sports is next. Stay with us. True Kai Sports. Welcome to Chukai Sports. PNG Hunters captain Noel Zeming has said the NRL Wellbeing Pilot Program, launched at the Waigani Primary School yesterday, is a significant stepping stone to improving the health of young Papua New Guineans. The program is aimed at creating inclusive development for primary school aged children. Graduate teacher and current star player for the PNG Hunters, Noel Zeming, encouraged this program as it will go a long way to shape these children's lives. Zeming said the incorporation of the well-being program into the education system is important as students will learn the importance of healthy living on a daily basis. Based on physical activity, nutrition and mental wellness, these young children will grow into a healthy adult lifestyle. I think it's a significant program to be uh, to start with. Uh, I see uh, in my area as a uh, rugby league professional life, it's very important for you know to be fit and healthy lifestyle is, is very important for. And uh, to incorporate this kind of program in the education system will really help you know the, our young 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 kids and children coming up and to know to know how to look after themselves, health wise and uh, 
Yeah, and it's very important for all of us to know that. Uh... NRL Pacific Programs Manager Michael Asensio said this is an effective method to spread the word of eating, living and playing well in the classrooms using well-known names in rugby. Is genuinely going to make a uh, difference to the lives of thousands and thousands of young children across the country. We are not looking for the next David Mead. We're not looking for the next Ruan Sims. She's a very famous female player in Australia as well. This program is about using those star players and using the incredible power our sport of rugby league has to captivate the imaginations of kids, to engage them in the classroom, to then spread that message about eating well about living well and playing well. Meanwhile, Waigani Primary School Principal Moses Modekewau highlighted the need for discipline as students' behaviour is now a problem and he believes this program will instill discipline in them. These programs are educational programs. We are not really looking at uh, to make uh, names known in rugby, but our most important fundamental is to bring these children what the Bible needs, what the family needs, what we, every one of us, needs, we mold this trend to become better people in the future. Dinero Shriko, National MTV Sports. SB Hunters coach Michael Murrum has retained the same side that beat Northern Pride for the Round 14 clash against South Logan Magpies at the National Football Stadium on Saturday. Thompson Tete plays his 50th Intra Super Cup match for the SB Hunters this weekend. He becomes the fifth player after Warto Vopora Jr., Alex Wera, Noel Zeming and Esau Siune to achieve this milestone. Tomse has been part of the SP Hunters since 2014 and Marum congratulated him on achieving his milestone. Tete says dedication and commitment is what has brought him this far in his career. Star fullback Stagroth Amin is still out injured while utility back Alex Wera has another week to serve on his two-week suspension. Blenda Bavu starts a fullback with Justin Olam and Philemon Kimisive on the wings. Noel Zeming and Thompson Tete play in the centers while the Boas brothers take care of the halves. Wartovo Pora Jr. plays in the hooker position with Henry Wan, Esau Siune, Ishmael Balkawa, Adam Korave and Brandy Peter lock the forward pack. Elijah Lavette, National MTV Sports. Chukai Sports continues after the break. Don't go away. True Kai Sports. Welcome back. International Test Rugby returns to the shores of Australia this weekend as the Wallabies gear up for their first test of the year against England on Saturday in Brisbane. The last time both sides met was last year when Australia prevailed 33 to 13 at Twickenham to send the host crashing out of the 2015 Rugby World Cup. But since then, newly appointed English coach Eddie Jones is pushing to get England back on track. Since Jones' recruitment, England have won a Grand Slam since the World Cup. But hopeful captain of the Wallabies for the weekend's test match, James Slipper, believes the Wallabies are capable of holding their own. Coach Michael Chika has puzzled many with the selection of his extended squad, particularly after the release of Ben Teo to England. We would have loved to have Ben back here playing in Australia. We, we, I will, <coughs> would not hesitate to say, you know, we tried to, to get him to come back and play in Super Rugby here. But, you know, as we've seen before, the, the, the English game has just more, more money than we have. You know what I mean? I think they've come here, they've got you know, a lot more resources to put into their game than we have. And as much as, you know, I, I've had a bit to do with Ben before he went over to Leinster, I've been in my club and he's a great guy. And, um, and there was no doubt that he was going to be successful in that move. And Assistant coach Stephen Larkham is the most familiar with Eddie Jones' coaching technique, being the main fly half during Jones' reign in Australian rugby. I think that's Eddie's style. Um, certainly creates a bit of hype around the game, a bit of interest in the game, and I think that's exactly what we need. But he's very passionate about Australia, um, and I'm sure he wants to come over here and teach us a lesson. Meanwhile, the squad is in training on the Sunshine Coast in Queensland, Australia, and await the final announcement for match day on Saturday. Lorraine Genia, National MTV Sports. That ends Chukai Sports. The weather details when we come back. Chukai Sports. True Kai Sports.
Your weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow. In the southern region, cloudy periods with showers for Port Moresby, fine for Daru, Alatau and Popendeta, and a shower or two for Kerima. In the Mamasa region, a shower or two for all centres. In the New Guinea Islands, thundery showers for Lorengau and Kaviang, and a shower or two for Kokopo, Rabaul, Kimbe and Buka. And in the Highlands region, brief showers, then morning fog for all centres. And now recapping our main stories for tonight. UPNG students severely injured following clashes with police, uproar in parliament between opposition and government MPs, and police to investigate today's incident. And that's the news, sports and weather for tonight. On behalf of the entire news team, I'm Hopi Maka. Pleasant viewing. Good night.